Hello, my name is Daniel Yuck. Thank you for joining today. I appreciate you, your time, and your support. In today's video, I want to talk more about something that I feel kind of gets overlooked and time and time again, and that's going to be connecting our tattoo lines. I'm going to touch base on why I feel this topic's important. I'm going to share with you some demonstrations as well. So be sure to stick around until the end of the video to get a better idea as to how I go about connecting my tattoo lines. Should you have any questions at all, I encourage you to drop a comment down below and I'm going to do my best to assist you in the best possible direction. Please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and ring my bell as I'm going to be bringing more videos like this for you. With that being said, let's get right on into this. When I go about connecting tattoo lines, I'm considering a few variables that I find very important. The first thing that I'm going to think about is my A and B point, basically where I'm going to start and stop on the line, hence A and B. I want to make sure that I identify my point A and B before I even commit to a line. So you can see that here is my A point and then I'm going to make my way on over to my B point. So I've already identified where I'm going to start and stop. This is going to help me determine what position and posture I will be using and what direction I will be moving in. I know this may not make a lot of sense, but just stay with me. I assure you all of these variables will add up and work together to create one solid consistent looking result. For me, by identifying my point A and B, I'm able to collectively know where I'm going to be going. I'm able to know what direction I'm going to be moving in. I'm able to figure out what is most comfortable to apply the cleanest possible results that I can apply. So I feel this is an important skip that I never really miss. When I didn't do this, I find that I was kind of pulling lines and creating lines and directions that I shouldn't have been moving in, getting results that I wasn't happy with. Once we've identified our point A and B, we're more equipped to commit to that line. Once I begin to commit to the line you're going to see here in this slow-mo snippet that I'm going to be careful with the introduction. I'm going to be careful with the way that I introduce the line into the fake skin. I'm going to use a taper in whenever I create the line and I'm going to taper this line out. As you can see shown on the slow motion clip before this I kind of swing the needle into this line and you're going to see on this slow motion clip I kind of swing it out as well. I don't abruptly introduce the needle into the skin and I don't abruptly take it out. I do this so that way I can have sharp fine clean edges and you're going to see throughout this entire design each and every line that I create it's with a taper in and a taper out. These tapers aren't necessarily a long taper they're actually really really short tapers that produce a sort of sharp end and it doesn't really give me that sort of round bulb look or like a uh, you know pull sort of look there typically I've seen where uh, the needle would be introduced to the skin really abruptly and we see where the needle touched down at and then where it touched down the artist tends to move a little bit slower which means that more ink got deposited in this area so it had like a sort of round look to it I don't want my edges that way. I need for them to have a sharp point. You can see right here for this example, I'm doing the top part of the star. On the previous examples, I was tapering out to get a sharp look. Right here, I'm tapering in. You can see on that slow motion video as well that I'm doing the same thing. I'm kind of swinging the needle in to get a sharper point. I hope you're still with me here, but there's a little bit more that kind of goes into this. So once I introduce the needle into the skin with that sort of like pendulum swing motion, I'm also going to focus on needle depth. So right when I introduce the needle into the line, I'm not committing to the full needle depth that I need to be at. So you can see right here, this is a great example of what I'm talking about. You can see I'm introducing the needle into the skin. Once I see it start touching even the surface level of the skin, that's where I'm going to begin the taper. Since I didn't fully commit to the proper needle depth at the beginning of that taper is the reason why it's depositing in a more pointed manner. That's my theory. It could be a little bit different, but my theory is just that. So the way that I'm looking at it is once I fully commit to the needle depth, that's when I've achieved the full line weight integrity of the needle that I'm using as well as saturation. I match my hand speed to my voltage to make the line smooth, clean, and consistent. And I kind of just stay as steady as I can so that way I can have really good, powerful looking lines. Here's another great example. I'm swinging the needle in. As you can see, I'm not committing to full needle depth, which gives me that sort of sharp point. Keep in mind, I'm also starting on the opposite end. I'm starting on the pointed line of the star and you're going to see at the end of the video that I'm going to have pointed ends that you can't tell the difference on. I feel like that is proper execution. Not to mention when I'm tapering out, none of my lines are crossing into the smaller line weights. You can see, and I want you to like to really look here that the lines are, you know, connecting together as they should. This is just something that I had a lot of trouble with when I first started. It was a little bit difficult for me to, you know, connect the lines perfectly. And honestly, it wasn't even something that I paid attention to. So therefore I would have designs that 
that had lines that were incomplete. There was gaps in between, the lines weren't connected. And over time, this takes away from the quality of the tattoos that we are producing. If you pay attention to this snippet and the next, you'll see that I swing into the line just a little bit and I don't fully commit to the needle depth until I feel I'm at a good position within the line. So here in this snippet, for example, you're going to see that I'm swinging into the line. I'm not at the full needle depth and around here I start committing. And I feel like once I commit to the full needle depth, I'm going to accomplish the line weight integrity of the needle that I'm using. For this instance, it's an 11 round liner. So when I taper in and I'm not committing to the full needle depth, and again, as I mentioned, I feel like that's where that sharp taper point comes from. You can see again, just minor pendulum swings into the line. I don't fully commit until I feel it's proper. And I kind of just feel that out. It's really hard to say where you start and stop. As you can see, a taper out right there. I really feel like the art of tapering really does impact our tattoos for the positive. You can see right here from this close up that all of the lines going into one another are nice, clean, sharp pointed. None of them really have a sort of round, bulby end to them. And that's what I was going for. I'm looking for clean consistency. This can be done with pretty much any needle. So you can see, for example, I'm using a five round liner here and I'm going to do the exact same thing where I taper in lightly and I taper out lightly into the existing lines. What I'm sharing with you here can apply to any needle configuration just to confirm even round mags, you know, the pendulum motions that I'm speaking of here and how I'm introducing the needle into the skin. That concept can be applied to different needle configurations, again, such as mags. So as of now, I know I've said a lot, but I want to give you a quick recap. So the idea of me connecting my lines, it has a few variables that I consider. I'm considering the A and B point where I'm starting and stopping, and this is pretty much where I begin. Once I've identified my point A and B, I'm going to make sure that the direction that I'm going to be flowing in is natural and comfortable for me. If not, then I'm going to have to adjust my posture, my position to go ahead and kind of meet that requirement. And then I want to make sure that I have adequate ink flow. You can see that right here, I didn't have that. So I went back for more ink and you couldn't really see the difference. So what that means is your technical application could be correct. You could have everything aligned. If your ink flow is not correct, you're not going to accomplish clean, consistent results because we are directly depositing the ink into the skin. So we have to have good ink flow. So identify point A to B, make sure the direction that you're flowing is comfortable. If not, fix your posture and position. Make sure you have adequate ink flow. And when I say adequate, I mean a healthy flow of ink. When you touch the skin with the needle, you don't want a pool of ink touching down, distorting what you need to see. You want to be able to see your needle tip at all times as you see in the demonstrations here that I'm showing you. There's no heavy pulling or anything like that, maybe from time to time, but the majority of the pools that I create, it's smooth, clean, consistent, and it's very neat as well. Again, this isn't by any means like the only way to do this the right way. This is just simply the flow that I worked into and the flow that I use to connect my lines and create my lines. You can see I kind of feel like this design right here is also a perfect example to kind of get my points across as it is. It does require multiple lines and in different line weights and multiple directions. So you can see I kind of moved the canvas that I was working on to accommodate. I adjusted my posture, my position after I've identified my point A and B. From here, I'm going to commit to the line as cleanly as I can. If any mistakes arise along the way, I'm going to go ahead and adjust accordingly. But you're going to see that when I start, I'm very mindful of tapering into the existing line and tapering out. That's where it goes back to that route where we identify point A and B. I feel like if we um, kind of do this each and every step of the way throughout our tattoos, we're going to minimize any lines that we may have missed. We're going to minimize not connecting lines or even overshooting lines. I kind of feel like just having a more paceful workflow and moving with purpose each and every time we tattoo would probably yield better results and a smoother experience, not only for us as a tattoo artist, but for the client as well. In terms of technicality, we're also going to obviously want to align our hand speed to our voltage. I really didn't talk too much about, you know, voltage when it came to connecting our lines. I more so wanted to focus on the techniques and logic behind me approaching my tattoos the way that I do to minimize this exact mistake right here, which is either not connecting our lines or overshooting our lines. So either way though, um, both would want to be avoided throughout any and every tattoo that we do. And I feel like we can do that by kind of being a little bit more, if not slower, more paceful and more efficient with how we approach our tattoos.
Before I conclude the video, I want to kind of just touch base here on a few more aspects. You're going to notice on each and every one of these demonstrations that I'm creating, even with this five round liner, I'm introducing the needle into the skin with a taper and I'm leaving the skin with a taper out. So you're going to see right there, that was a clear uh, like kind of pendulum swing into the skin. I kind of tapered in, I fully committed to the line all the way up until here. You're gonna see at the end, I taper out into the existing line. And I, I feel like that's why pulling is very important to kind of avoid at all costs so that we can see where we're going. This right here are the final results. As I mentioned earlier, you can't tell what what uh, points of the stars were done in what direction, although they were done in different directions. You wouldn't be able to tell because the technical application I feel was correct throughout each and every line that I created within this design. Although it's not by any means perfect, I do feel like it's a solid, clean reading tattoo. I feel like this is also a great place to conclude this video. If you have any questions at all, please feel free to drop them in the comment section down below. I'm going to do my best to assist you in the best possible direction. Please, before you go, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and ring my bell as I'm going to be bringing more videos like this for you. With that being said, I appreciate your time and I thank you for watching. You have a great day.